core of our team uh, be guys that we recruited to the program and have them in the program uh, so they can develop to the maximum. But, you know, if we have opportunities, as I, I think I said in the past, and we look at guys like Nakia Sargent, look at guys like Zach Van Balkenberger, Jack Heflin, that joined our program and had real positive impacts, those are the kind of things that we're looking for. And if we get those opportunities, so we're going to pursue them and follow them. But, but again, I think, you know, the core of our team hopefully will be built uh, on campus here. And with that comes, you know, a chance to watch guys develop and, and develop relationships that uh, go beyond. So that, that's really what we're looking for. The, the bottom line, uh, our goal is to, you know, provide a real true team experience for all the players in our program. <laughs> Whether they join us for one year or they're here for four or five, that, that doesn't change. And, to do it with the values that we think are really important. So I think we've communicated that well with the prospects and just, again, really happy with uh, the class. Uh, again, different than years past where, you know, a, a lot of guys were already, a lot of prospects were committed back in June and or even earlier. And then, uh, you know, then you move forward. And I think a lot of things as recently as this weekend, uh, you know, like Terrell Washington coming up, uh, basically for not quite a, a 24-hour visit. We got in real late Saturday night, Sunday morning, and. Uh, left here Monday morning, uh, you know, via a car. We weren't allowed to have any contact with them. So, you know, all kinds of twists and turns stories there, and you know, talk and fill you in on some of those. But again, just just really uh, pleased and appreciative uh, about this class. I'll throw it out for questions and go from there. On the topic of the transfer portal, you bring in Cade McNamara. I know you can announce the signing. Can talk about him now. What uh, what attracted you about bringing him in? What is his timetable for recovery? Uh, what can you tell us about your plans for Cade McNamara? Sure. Obviously, he had a medical situation. And that's something we wanted to check thoroughly. And, uh, but, you know, it was really kind of an easy decision just because of, uh, you know, we, we got first-hand exposure to him. You know, saw him prior to that, just going through the season's film. But uh, we got first-hand exposure to him a year ago, December. And had great respect for uh, him and the entire team coming into that game for obvious reasons. And left the field feeling even, you know, those are more verified, if you will, those thoughts and suspicions. And, yeah, I'm not a quarterback expert for just watching what he did a year ago. Uh, it just struck me as a winner, and that's really what you're looking for in that position, a leader. And a winner is somebody who's going to move the football team. He did a great job of that at uh, his previous school. And, you know, whatever the details would have been this year and how things fell, uh, to me, it really didn't matter. But, you know, it was a real opportunity for us, I think, to uh, maybe, you know, attract a guy who, you know, saw an opportunity and is excited about it. But health-wise, I mean, will he be back for the spring, as far as you know, or yeah, what, we'll what do you think? we'll see how he once he gets here, but we're very confident he'll be fine. And, okay. Um, you know, that, I don't think it's uncommon, and it just, it's just something you factor in. We can talk about a guy who's been on, the, on a Big Ten field and had very, uh, you know, high state level of success. It's not quite as big a factor as how much repetition you get. Obviously, you make a transition, but confident that's going to be okay. What about uh, Eric All? And his the combination there. How do you think he fits uh, with two tight ends set now? Uh, you had pretty good success with that about four or five years ago. Does he kind of add to that? Yeah, it's kind of not the same discussion, but somewhere in the you know we got to see him firsthand too, and um, several games prior to our game really caught my attention there. So it's just sometimes you just know those players. He was one of them, and so it just turned out that uh, you know he became interested and available, and uh, he and Kate have a good relationship, I believe. So. I don't think it hurt us, at least in our, our attempt to try to recruit him. And, you know, we're losing a, a top-notch tight end to Sam LaPorte, outstanding. And then you think about the way Luke Lachey is ascending, has ascended. So we go from, I think, having two really good tight ends to hopefully the same situation. And, you know, that's uh, certainly a good thing for us. Can you say anything about Eric's medical status? Is he ready to go? Uh, I don't know if he's, he's not ready today, but, you know, we're very confident he'll be fine. So, again, not too worried about it. Kirk, you guys like every program seems like you know people have opted in the transfer portal i did notice that dallas craddock was still listed on the 2d despite being in the portal is he practicing is he what, what's kind of his stats compared to maybe some of the other guys in the portal yeah he, he is practicing he's in the two deep and <clears throat> obviously got a little bit of a void back there but can't say enough about dallas he uh, and this is one of the advantages of the portal too it's not just you know uh, up and above and all that stuff but i think he's got interest in going to a, a smaller program a smaller level program closer to home Finishing out his career there, uh, where he can really hopefully play a major role. But I think the story of Dallas really is, you know, he's really done a great job, especially this last year. He's been um, running on the scout team, running offensive, you know, being a receiver against the defense, that type of thing. Anything to help the team. And I think you look at that kind of, um, you know, just team team behavior, if you will, team attitude. Can't say enough about him. He's really growing in the program. 
Uh, certainly, we wish him all the best in his next uh, next home, but glad he's going to be with us uh, at least through this year. Uh, Sam Laporta is back on the two deeps. He's ready for the bowl game then. I think so. You know, he's back on the field. And seems to be doing great. And, uh, you know, so happy about that certainly. With the secondary, no cave on, how do you plan to? Sebastian Caster is the first team strong yep. safety. He's also at cash. How do you plan to navigate that? We'll, we'll determine it here in the next uh, week and a half here. But, uh, you know, the guys that are still back there, they're, they're going to be in the game. And whatever combination, one good thing typically Phil works the safeties. Uh, we're there free and strong. So, again, we got some position flexibility there. Just figure out what the best combination is and you know, keep our, our best guys on the field, hopefully. But all that being said, you know, we're losing a, a team leader, a guy who's really experienced. And, um, you know, we'll just uh, try to absorb that. But if he twists his ankle, it'll be the same thing. We'd be dealing with the same issue. Is there a chance uh, Wampa could play strong safety? Yeah, I think, you know, it, again, it's not as big a deal. I don't think, you know, yeah. who's in the game. But we're always going to have two safeties and then a minimum in there. So, yeah, he's, he's right in the thick of things. He's doing well. Kirk, I know it's still a little bit early, but have you spoken with Nico Regani about potentially returning next year? What's kind of, what are those kind of conversations like right now? Yeah, we, we've had conversations with several of our guys, and uh, I think they're all kind of weighing and measuring. And uh, it's not the same as, but a little bit like you know, last year at this time, Riley Moss was trying to figure out is he going to go to the NFL. So, yeah, those are decisions some of the older guys make, and with the COVID year, uh, you know, a couple of them have more options now. And we'll just, you know, we're not pressuring them. We're not trying to encourage them to, to hurry, but. Uh, I want to make sure they know that they more than welcome back. Love to have uh, guys come back, but it, you know, want it to be their idea, not ours. I know this is uh, the perfect opportunity to talk about the guys who are signing with your program, yeah. uh, but there is one prominent player who chose not to be a part sure. of it. Uh, what's kind of your thoughts now, a couple of days removed from when he decommitted and now signed with Alabama? Yeah, it's recruiting, and uh, I, I really haven't read it or heard, you know, heard much, but. Uh, one thing I think I've said before, you can't lose what you never had, and, and recruiting's not over until someone signs, actually signs, and, you know, not only commits, but actually signs. So, and the other part about that, you know, uh, prospects, people have the, the right to make up their mind right until that time. So respect that, and I'm sure, you know, if that prospect had his reasons for doing what he's done, um, we would love to, you know, if we've offered somebody, we've, we've done our research and homework, so uh, there was nothing on our end, and it looked like we didn't want him here, but, uh, yeah, that's up for a prospect to decide what's best for them. That's really how the process should work. I was telling recruits, you know, we're never going to hopefully never be presumptuous and act like we know what's better for them than what they know. Joe Labus is listed number one. Is that any indication that he has the, the a big lead, a slight lead, or does that mean nothing? He's number one and uh, Carson's number two. <laughs> okay. And your guess is as good as mine on number three. How's, he, so. how's it going out there with the quarterbacks? No, no, yeah? Good. You know, I mean, it's just – um, is you know we've talked about before it's really hard to work more than two quarterbacks during the yeah. course of the season so that, that's where this is a really unusual situation and you know the, the, the person who suffered the most here is Spencer just because you know ended up being the, an injury that needed surgery so that, that part's really hard and uh, it's hard for him to be out there watching uh, with a you know a sling on and all that but he's done a great job helping and really coaching Joe up and those guys all get along great so that's where you know each and every snap is really important uh, for both those quarterbacks. What is the since like December fifth been like for you? With you have to go out and recruit, you have bull prep, you have a portal, and you're having to recruit your own roster in a lot of ways to stay at times. What is that like for a head coach? Yeah, so I'm only smiling. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's crazy, but that's the nature of the job. First of all. Tar can answer this. I, I don't know if that was an extra week of recruiting in December. He can do that. Yeah. I mean, it's just like you know, we do what we're told to do, right? So if we got to recruit this week, then we're if we can recruit, then we're going to go out and do it, and you go where you're needed. But um, you know, don't worry about cop things. Just do it. It's not like you know, running sprints when you're back when you're playing or whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just it's the nature of what we do. And uh, you know, I've said before, I've got some concerns about where college football is right now, where we're heading, uh, and who's directing it. But, you know, I'll give you a quick aside. I'm, I'm smiling. We're going to a recruiting breakfast Saturday morning. I was on my way over and had the college station on. And somebody, I'm not sure who he was or what his authority was or his uh, expertise was, was basically just throwing out that, you know, why would a guy play in a bowl game, a senior who might be a prospect? And, you know, everybody's got to write to their own opinions, but it, 
there's, there's a lot of reasons why you, a guy would play too as a senior. And uh, Jack Campbell will probably be a guy to ask about that. Yeah. So it just, you know, it just everybody's got got a right to, you know, think about what they think. And uh, but all that being said, to your point, yeah, our world's gotten a little crazier.